Welcome to Digital Asset News. I get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. I'm bringing on to bite sized pieces. Today, we had a lot of things to go over, so let's jump right in. First up, former EU Parliament member Godfrey Bloom, who calls banking system a scam, bought his first Bitcoin. And this is the internet's favorite example of someone who can rail against the central banks and why this is so important. He's actually into Bitcoin now, also. On the heels of the XRP Spark airdrop, there's a new scam coming about. I'm going to tell you exactly what it is and how to avoid it so you don't fall victim. Speaking of XRP, two fraud allegations have been dropped against Ripple and their CEO, Brad Garlinghouse. However, the XRP lawsuit does move forward and there's some interesting wrinkles here. And we're gonna get into Brad Garlinghouse and his holdings as far as XRP, how much he sold and how much he has. Also, SushiSwap starts to tank and bleed out as it drops below a dollar. And I have to tell you, good riddance. And we're going to talk about this as far as what a project should absolutely not and never do, and what a project like Uniswap and how it redeems the whole area. Final two pieces, I want to take a look at this new project called Polka Starter. There's some pretty good stuff about it, but there's also some things that make me very leery. So we'll get into all that, but let's take a look what's going on in the market. So today is October 4th, about 2 p.m. It is Sunday. Fantastically beautiful day here in the fantastic city of El Paso, Texas. But what do we got here? Wow, Bitcoin is up 1%, 10.6. You cannot beat that. First of all, it's a Sunday. Things usually start to kind of take a dip. And also with everything that happened to BitMEX, with the US president, and you know, just the global economy in general, I mean, hey, pretty great day if it's up 1%. Ethereum up 1% and it's uh, above 350. Super happy. Tether, which is uh, tethered to the US dollar is at a dollar. <laughs> XRP, which I think is tethered to the quarter, is around 25 cents. Binance Coin, 3.4% up. I can, I do like that. I'm not a big holder, but whoever is a holder out there for Binance, uh, congratulations. Uh, good job holding that coin. Bitcoin Cash, 0.9. Let's see, what else is really up? 3.5 for Cardano. Eh, not too bad. 3.7 for Monero. Again, Monero making a nice little, little uh, pump. Uh, hopefully, I can actually hit in that top 10. We'll see what happens. 0 0.8 with 3.6, 1.2. Uh, nothing really great. Uniswap, ah, down 6%, almost 7, down to 374. I was hoping it would hold that $4 range, but just couldn't do it. But I see big things in the horizon. I I see decentralized exchanges becoming more and more of a better thing and actually just better for all of us. So um, besides all the different scam coins that are out there, hopefully they can you know, deal with that. But I think that they are the future, especially with what's going on with these centralized exchanges. And uh, just take a look at BitMEX. Everything else is good, but wow, look at Celsius Network, 54% up. Unbelievable for the week, 15%. And I was just talking about this a couple days ago. It, it just uh, crossed the dollar barrier. Now we're at $1.40, so it's two bucks in the horizon. I don't know, but uh, I have to tell you, uh, Celsius is one of my main my main things. Uh, they are my one, two, three punch as far as what I do with my cryptocurrency. I have 30% of my entire portfolio in the Celsius wallet. And uh, I believe in what they're doing. Like Alex Wyshynski, looks like a pretty good thing. I like them. Um, I buy most of my things with Voyager or with Kraken. And those are my one, two, three punches from now on. If you want to sign up for Celsius, uh, just in the description of every one of my videos, there's a link to the Google spreadsheet, uh, exchange and wallet fees. And I just go through everything that I use and recommend or do not recommend. And if you sign up with Celsius, uh, you know, it's $20. So you can go right to Celsius and sign up, or you can use the affiliate links for all these different ones that I have and uh, get paid a little bit, but uh, that's up to you. Do whatever you want. So, all right, let's break into today's top stories. So first up, I've seen this guy countless times on the internet and I have no idea who he is. And now it all makes sense. So this is former parliament member Godfrey Bloom. That's a good name, Godfrey Bloom, who called banking system just an outright scam. And you gotta love this guy. So first of all, who is this guy? He's a, he's a politician member of the EU for Yorkshire and the Humber from 2004 to 2014. No idea what that is. I'm in America. It's all foreign to me. Uh, he was elected for the UK Independence Party, later served as Independent Bloom, has also published six books on military history and the Austrian School of Economics. So a uh, pretty bright guy and really gets to know things and probably one of the brightest ones that we can have as far as uh, talking about that the central banks are out and right scams because, hey, Wrote a couple books on it. And yeah, the former MEP is well known for his unconventional views, calling the state an institution of theft and saying the debt crisis was created by politicians and central bankers. And if you're on my channel, uh, you know I wholeheartedly agree with that. Those people 
all of them that are involved are all guilty of this. All of them. So when we see someone like this, just kind of, you know, call a spade a spade. I love people like that. He even said the whole banking system is a scam, as is global warming. So just to get you a little insight about this guy, just how, you know, how ballsy he is. I mean, get was. I mean, this guy, he's great for the whole industry. He's He's great as far as honesty, and uh, I when I first saw this video, I saw this like, like a couple years ago, it was fantastic. So I'm just going to play this for you so you know exactly what the heck I'm talking about. For the EFT, Mr. Bloom has two minutes. Uh, well, uh, Commissioner, um, Mr. President, uh, I rise again, I'm afraid, to make the same old hoary speech that I've been making here for several years. And that is, it is my opinion that you do not really understand the concept of banking. All the banks are broke. Uh, Bank Santander, Deutsche Bank, Royal Bank of Scotland, they're all broke. And why are they broke? It isn't an act of God. It isn't some sort of tsunami. They're broke because we have a system called fractional reserve banking, which means that banks can lend money that they don't actually have. It's a criminal scandal, and it's been going on for too long. To add to that problem, you have moral hazard, a very significant moral hazard from the political sphere. And most of the problem starts in politics and central banks, which are part of the same political system. We have counterfeiting, sometimes called quantitative easing, but counterfeiting by any other name. The artificial printing of money which if any ordinary person did, they'd go to prison for a very long time. And yet governments and central banks do it all the time. Central banks repress the amount of interest that rate, rates are, so we don't have the real cost of money. And yet we blame the real retail banks for manipulating LIBOR. The sheer effrontery of this is quite astonishing. It's central banks. It's central banks that manipulate interest rates, Commissioner. And plus, underneath all this, we talk loosely, in a rather cavalier fashion, do we not, about deposit guarantees. So when banks go broke through their own incompetence and chicanery, the taxpayer picks up the tab. It's theft from the taxpayer. And until we start sending bankers, and I include central bankers and politicians, to prison for this outrage, it will continue. Well, that's a steaming bowl of truth right there, if I've ever heard any. So uh, this is the guy. And I can tell you, you got to love him. Okay, wait, well, before we move on, I just got to say that we did a video yesterday about Michael Saylor, who, was the C who is the CEO of MicroStrategy, who had put put in almost, uh, almost half a billion dollars worth of uh, fiat into Bitcoin and what he thinks about it. And we had known about this story, you know, two, three weeks ago, but there was another interview that he did with Stansbury Research where he pretty much just lays it out uh, why Bitcoin is far, far superior to gold and everything else. Now, I'm a believer in gold. I have invested into it. I think the new saving strategy should be gold, silver, Bitcoin. And uh, when we have people that just start to get it, like Sailor here, like Bloom, like all these different people, like the Paul Tudor Jones, you start to feel like things are shifting, that things are changing. And this is, I got to tell you, I mean, the most exciting time to be in this space because people are just starting to wake up and going, wait, the world's on fire. The interest rates are going down to zero or maybe even negative. The inflation rate is going up way too fast. And this quantitative easing, someone's going to have to pay for this. So what do we do? Well, we have choices and we can stay into money and fiat and things like that, or we can hedge our bet and look at some other types of assets like, well, I don't know, Bitcoin. So I feel the shift. I see it coming. Let me know what you think, but let's move on. So what was interesting to me about this guy is that Bloom hadn't invested into Bitcoin yet. He had just gone into gold and silver. But this all changed on Thursday when he said he, that he bought his first in, uh, Bitcoin. He says, I made my first purchase of Bitcoin this week. Gold and sir, silver, I have plenty. I'm sure he does. Probably a pretty well-off guy. And then further on, he elaborates, I'm not anti-Bitcoin, just an old geezer, more comfortable with gold. He responded to a tweet urging him to get into Bitcoin in May. And this is what this is the thing. Just because when you talk to people and they say, you know what, I don't really get Bitcoin. I don't really understand it. Or I don't, you know, really, I, I, I can't get behind it because it has no fill in the blank. It has no utility. It's going to go away. It's You can have all these forks, you can have all these problems and and gold and silver and, and fiat is a, is a safer opportunity. You just have to keep telling them exactly why. Because what I feel like for this channel does, it's kind of like 
educating people as much as I can get my hands on and pull them into this life raft before everything goes under. That's kind of how I feel. So I think it's the same thing here with Bloom. Very smart guy, wrote a couple of books on the economy. So, I mean, he finally gets it after all this time. And it's been, I mean, that video I showed you was 2013. So, I mean, you have to really put in the time to kind of change people's thoughts. That's just how it is. And then he states that he's been buying gold since the 90s when it was 250 per ounce. Now it's almost, it's 1550. I think it was the high, it was like a 2000. And then lastly, he states, uh, he indicated in response to the tweet that he will not ignore Ethereum and decentralized finance in his research. So again, this is a guy who just started off with Bitcoin, which I always call it the, uh, the gateway crypto. And then he's going to fall down that rabbit hole. And who knows, maybe he can be on this channel and talk about his, his, uh, his experiences. Let me just think in the comment section. Let's move on.